Welcome to the Dirt Life Show with your host, George Hamill. Welcome to episode 145 of the Dirt Life Show. We're at Warfighter Made today, and uh, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff, man. Uh, the title that I use, Rob, is actually a pretty good one. Warfighter Made, uh, Helping Veterans and Changing Lives. Dave, what do you think? That's, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, but yeah, I'm surprised, I'm surprised you came up with that. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> brain injuries. <laughs> I was actually thinking about that today, about all the brain injuries. But yeah, we're going to have a good time. Uh, we got Kristen over here next to Rob. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Thanks for coming in and hanging out with us. You guys have all been so busy lately. It's crazy. Uh, so we're going to talk about all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, we got two things going on. We got uh, Facebook over and YouTube over here, and then we got uh, all you guys on Instagram. So thank you guys for joining us and hanging out. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, well, actually, first, my name is Jordan Hamill. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Warfighter guys. They did Adrenaline Therapy Saturdays, which is something that we think all of you guys should join. Um, and that's uh, something that Rob will give you more information about. Kristen helps handle all that stuff. And they also won the Nora 500 this last weekend. How was that, dude? The Nora 500. Any Nora race is awesome. Ton of fun. Uh, you know, there's there's... The, the Mexican 1000, Nora's 1000 mile race is, is called the happiest race on earth. Yep. And there's a lot to be said about that because it really is. Just the format, the way it's laid out, uh, it's a rally. So you start in the morning, you end when you get to your predetermined spot or you time out. Um, but if you know everything goes well, like for instance, you start in Ensenada, you go to uh, San Felipe, and you get there on time, everything's good to go, prep your vehicle, go to sleep, wake up the next morning, do it all over again, all the way down the peninsula. I've well. always wanted to do that, dude. It looks super cool. It's a ton of fun. Um, it's it's not stressful like um, the Baja 1000 where, you know, you're in the Baja 1000, you take off the start line and, and blow an engine, you're done. Yeah. You know? Dude. you. You're not going to be able to to get that fixed and get back in the race before you time out. Um, but in there's all kinds of awesome stories about guys losing engines, driving up to some local, offering them five hundred dollars for their truck. They take it, pull the engine out of that, slap it into their vehicle, and you know Dude, go those, on to those to stories are so cool, man. I love it. I mean, the, the Nor is where it's at. We have a ton of fun doing that. L Y N, you won. So. Well, we won, but. We did the Mexican 1000 this year, and we lost an engine uh, going into Bay of LA. Did so, you go buy one off a of local? <laughs> no, no. We, we, but we're the guys in 2017 for the 50th anniversary of the uh, Mexican 1000. Uh, we went down there with a vehicle that we were having issues with, and we ended up getting towed over the start line on day one. Really? We couldn't get it running right. Uh, so in San Felipe, we towed it down to the start line, pushed it over the start line, got it put back on the trailer, hauled butt to Bay of LA, did that same thing over and over and over again. And we were the official last place finisher, finishers, but we still got a second place in class. Dude, but you finished, dude. That's <laughs> such a, for anybody that doesn't know like how gnarly it is down there, just across the finish line is a freaking accomplishment, yeah. man. Uh, all right, so um, yeah, just to give a little bit more backstory. So today we're going to talk about um, a couple things, a couple things that Kristen actually told me. So Kristen handles a lot of the, uh, well, pretty much every duty here at Warfighter Made that Rob doesn't handle. Uh, but anyway, well, actually, she she's, she's the executive director. She's got it all. But anyway, so she was telling me some stuff about uh, a couple guys that are going to join us today. Uh, George Earl, an act, or a retired uh, Army veteran. and uh, Marine. 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 Okay. Marine. Marine. Uh, and, uh, dude, the stories that he was telling me on the phone just to, like to get introduced to this stuff, like his knowledge surpasses anything that I'll ever know in my whole life, like how knowledgeable he is about stuff. Oh, and, and he's so methodical when he's doing this. I just saw Andrew McKenzie, our crew guy. Uh, yeah, I was going to introduce him that. Ch check in and, and, uh, George is really methodical when he wants to do something. I mean, really methodical. But that's probably stuff like the upbringing, right? Like being, oh, yeah. being a Marine, that that's what you're bred to do, right? Well, 
we always joke too that he's probably forgotten more than we'll ever know. Yeah, that's what that's what I was looking forward to say right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and then so Kristen was telling me as well that uh, Andrew, who you're just talking about, is going to uh, call into it and have a little bit of fun with us. He drove all the way from Texas, mm -hmm. what twenty four hours or something, in, in, in his wife's truck. Perfect. Let me borrow your truck, man. See ya. <laughs> and uh, goes all the way down to Ensenada just to help you guys, and uh, he. He was very, very useful. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when he shows up, I mean, he, you know, he's a little tired from the drive, but as soon as he shows up, he's like, you know, what needs to be done? And he's in here thrashing, uh, getting stuff ready, prepped and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, he towed Beefy down there for us. Oh, really? To Ensenada. Oh, yeah. His truck was the main Oh, so he truck. came to, from Texas to here and then went to Ensenada. Yes. Right. Dang, yeah, dude, that's such a crazy thing to do, man. That's a lot of seat time. To get you guys across the finish line in first place. Yep. Uh, do you have the trophy here? Hell yeah, I got the trophy here. Nice. We should see that. Oh, thing. wait, hold on. Let me go get it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we're going to talk to Kristen. Kristen was able to uh, go down there and hang out with uh, all the boys, uh, including her husband, Danny. Yep. Uh, how was that for you? You know, it, it was really interesting. It was a lot of fun, first Well, you've foremost. been around the boys a lot, but this exactly. was a little bit more, I don't know, you're a little bit more integrated this time? This time, definitely, because all of the previous years that uh, Danny has gone down to the 1,000 and the 500, I've always heard all the stories when he comes back of, hey, this happened and this happened. But to go down there and actually experience it, you know, firsthand perspective of watching the preparation of the vehicle and watching the teamwork that goes into making sure it's dialed in and whatnot. Um, just, and then being, of course, in the back seat, I got to be in the back seat for a leg of the race was an amazing experience. That was my first time ever in an official race, and, and I was really stoked to be able to do it with him. Dude, it seems so cool. I want to talk more about that, but I'll say he just brings in like know. six. There's just thousand. so many. Oh, to oh, oh, it's, sorry, it's not this one either. <laughs> Let's see here. This, oh, this, uh, oh, that was our second place trophy right there. Let's see. Here it is. Oh, here it is. It's the shiny one that's not all. You yeah. yeah. mind if I touch it? <laughs> I'm going to show it to these okay. guys. That's actually a super cool trophy, man. Uh, look at, yeah, first place, 2022. Mm -hmm. That's cool, man. But that shows a lot. Well, first of all, like, uh, we're just joking with you, but all of the things that have to happen for all of those trophies to be accomplished and to win those things is insane. Yeah. Like, and well, and now, Kristen, you got to sit in the truck and now you understand what goes on. Well, I guess in the heat of battle, right? And yeah. then obviously on the sidelines too. Yeah. Yeah, it's no joke. I mean, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on between, you know, that Danny's watching for every tree in Boulder and, you know, all of this stuff while you're flying, you know, through these different areas and your co-drivers calling out, you know, your hazards and where you got to watch out and this, this, that, and the other. And meanwhile, dust is getting kicked up. It's intense. I mean, there's no dull moment. In the, I mean, I was in the truck for about three and a half hours of, of the first Dude, day. Dude, that's a good amount of time. Yeah, it was a good amount of time. How'd your back feel? You know what? I think it didn't hit me till the next day, and it's because I felt like a bobblehead with that helmet on, just bouncing around in the back seat the whole time. But I tell you what. Like Mario Brothers, you feel like you're squished? Uh, no, it wasn't that. It was just not used to like that much kind of inertia this way, this way, this way. You're like, it's like a roller coaster times 10, you know what I mean? And, uh, and doing that for three and a half hours uh, in that race, it, you know, your body takes a little bit of a beating, but Dude, it's so well worth A it. little bit of a beating yeah. is an understatement. Rob, tell us a little bit, because most of the people that are probably watching have already seen Beefy. Beefy's a, a Humvee, yeah. but give us a little bit more understanding of what it is. Yeah, so uh, Beefy is a, a first generation Humvee. It's a 94 M998, which uh, anybody who served in the military in the 80s and 90s, uh, it was the Humvee that they probably uh, knew. Um, Beefy is a diesel. Um, first generations of Humvees had basically a turbo 400 transmission, which is a three-speed transmission, no overdrive, and no park. Literally, it goes reverse neutral drive uh, second first. Um, because back in the day, uh, GM just said that uh, Humvees are too heavy and it'll it'll break the parking gear and you'll have right. Humvees rolling all over the place. So they just And it tops out at about six point nine miles an hour, right? Like six six point nine miles an hour when you're matted, wind to your back, going downhill. So what because George Earl was telling me about it, or we could ask him if he if he's able to log on, but um 
what is the top speed of that thing? Because it was something like, what, 35 miles an hour or something? Well, we averaged 35 miles an hour okay, during average, the race. Okay. Uh, during the Mexican 1000 in 2021, uh, myself and my co-driver hit uh, 78 miles an hour on the El Diablo dry lake bed. Dude, that's wide open as fast as I think. Dude, how did it feel going that fast in that Bay Rig? It's actually, it's actually not easy. Bad. Yeah, it's 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 not bad at all. So, what was the top speed you got, Mister Chris? I was more focused on making sure we were the magenta line. Oh. I was focused follow on the magenta I was the, line. Yeah, follow the magenta line. I was in the back seat just watching for uh, all the cues on the screen and whatnot. Um, I think the top that I noticed was about fifty four. Oh, cool. Yeah. That was a good experience. And the first time you ever done it then? Yeah. Yeah, because I always think, like, what was the, the thing that you remember most about it? Following the purple line? Or did you remember something else specific? No, you know what? I could not believe. I mean, it's loud. Don't get yeah. me wrong. It is extremely loud. You're hearing just all kinds of stuff bang around. <laughs> but it's how well that vehicle took the terrain blew me away for how big of a vehicle that is. You know, I would, some of the sounds were so loud, I was expecting to turn around and, like, you know, the back hatch was off or the door was missing or actually we came close to losing a door so that's pretty accurate um but it's just it that vehicle is a beast and it takes a beating and it just keeps going i mean it, it truly is a beast dude awesome. it look it looks so cool though like i love that truck but um i don't know i mean like when you're sitting there for the first, like, what's your feeling? Because I remember the first time, like, I got to be able to do some of that, like, desert racing stuff. And the first thing that I remembered was, God, there's so much freaking dust. Like, you can't see through any of the dust. Like, what was, the, like, the main thing that you remember? You know what? Um, we went through a pretty technical part of the course, I guess, which was the pine trees. So what was the... I guess what uh, captured most of my attention was wondering how soon we were going to hit a tree. Because literally, as we're barreling through these pine trees on the left, hitting us on the right, of course, BP has no windshield, so yep. pine branches are flying into the back seat and landing in my lap. But we're just, we're just going. We're Check just it out. Going. Look yeah. who's joined us, Rob. Who joined us. George Earl, what's up, man? How are you? Good, good. I couldn't find you guys. Well, I found you. I was listening to you, but something came up. I punched it, and there I am. <laughs> perfect that's how it works man well i'm glad to see you how did you uh uh feel after the week of nora or the few days of nora fine well there <laughs> there you have it so yeah. thanks guys we'll see you guys later both <laughs> and we're done so for everyone that's uh this that's wondering who the old dude is freaking staring at the fairly rest never mind i'm not even gonna say it uh, this is George Earl. George Earl is a uh, Vietnam vet. Uh, he was a Marine. He's got uh, three purple Still hearts green. and three bronze stars. Did, what did you just say, George? Still what? Green. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Old George course. is a Marine. He is a Marine. Um, and uh, one of his good stories is uh, the, the first 1,000-mile race he missed because he was uh, serving in Vietnam, and he didn't miss another one after that until he officially retired. But then we were fortunate enough to get him to come out of retirement and uh, come hang out with us. Where are you at right now, George? You at your shop? I'm at the shop, yeah. Yeah, what's your shop called? Uptight Husqvarna Beta. Uptight Husqvarna Beta. And where are you located? I'm in Santa Ana. Santa Ana. Santa Ana. Yeah, I, I was just over there yesterday. You should have stopped by. I, got I know, man. Here. Well, well, now he knows where you work at, so he will. Right. Good. Good. <laughs> exactly. So, some of the stuff that we were talking about earlier this week was, um, what, what did you tell me, George? You said, uh, I have it written down here, to uh, to make sure you cross the finish line. Uh, let's see here. What was his, his comment? It was pretty good, man. So, George, you had told me, you said, manage the vehicle in different terrain. And if you're hurting yourself, you're hurting the vehicle. So that's yeah. kind of what we talked about with Kristen a little bit was, you know, she was like surprised how much you bounce around and stuff in there. So it sounds like you guys might have slowed it down and just took it easy to make sure you save the vehicle. Oh, absolutely. You have to because, you know, you can testosterone, you can break that any vehicle out there. I don't care if you got in anybody's trophy truck and they break. You know, you just got to find where you're not going to kill it. 
and I don't yeah. like to walk anymore, so I'm not going to walk out of the desert. <laughs> <laughs> How was it, Rob, driving that thing around, man? Did you really have to baby it, or did you just? Well, day day one, we we went at it uh, pretty tough because we got uh, Chad Hall, uh, Rod Hall's son, uh, uh, Hall Performance Racing. We have their new long travel kit on Beefy. And uh, it it really made a huge difference in in the performance of the suspension. Yeah, suspension, absolutely. And then of course you know we're sitting in PRP seats, so it was actually a lot more comfortable than uh, when we went down there in the one thousand. Yeah, previous race. So, I remember you. That's the reason why I was so uh, wanting to know so much about it because you said that it was pretty gnarly last time. Yeah, we're uh, we're. Everyone back at home, that right there is is beefy, and uh, as you can tell, we don't really baby beefy until George gets in the car, and then he brings it home. Dude, you guys are sending it so hard in that thing, man. (laughs) It's so cool to see it, though, man. You got to do it at least once. Danny, uh... Danny got the opportunity to uh, to hit that jump in uh, in our Chinook Light Strike vehicle, the three seat dune buggy that we have, and and uh, you just gotta send it on that jump every time. How much does that thing weigh, George? Do you know? Probably about twenty tons. <laughs> <laughs> about yeah, 6,800 6, pounds fueled and uh, dude with, with the, people. And you guys can send it that hard. Hey, George, have you ever seen when you were in the Marines? Did you ever see anybody jump in those Hummers like you guys did or like Rob does? Hey, <laughs> that was I was in the Marines 40 years before they came out with a Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> George, we, had, George, we had real Jeeps. George had Jeeps, he had uh, mules oh. and uh, gamma, whatever those things were called. What's that, that little, uh, it was like a little tiny Jeep, little aluminum thing. Yeah, but it had like a, a bed attached to the back of it, Gam, Gamma something or other. Oh, I've seen those. Oh, yeah, oh, I've seen those things. I forget what the hell they call them, but they were kind of fun. They were uh, four-wheel drive independent suspension, so you could roll them pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> but they're pretty yeah, light, so they give us good turn. We found that out. Uh, all right, so what if it's called a mighty might? A mighty might, mighty might. Oh, that's kind of a cool name. I like that. Uh, so one of the questions that I was going to ask, uh, but it's one of the, the most sentimental and uh, meaningful questions for Warfighter made is what does it do for you being with all the guys and being in a position that you can, you know, work on all this stuff, join everybody, be have all this teamwork and. The things that are missed since you're not in the Marines anymore. Well, that's that's a big thing. It's just having that, you know, everybody said, you know, it's, it's a brotherhood. And when you're around other Marines, you feel more comfortable. Whereas when you're just around civilians, you know, yeah, you're comfortable, but it's not the same. It's, right. you know, it's, I don't know how to describe it. You know, it's just a different feeling. You just feel, you feel very, very comfortable. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you when you can describe it easily, I mean, anybody can understand that, like you pick your friends because you get along with them. Right. And you have similar interests and similar things. And for you guys, that's uh, well, Rob says it a lot. Maybe it's elevated. Right. Because you've been through so many uh, is traumatic or, you know, high high stress situations and all this stuff. So um, it makes it so it's more meaningful for you guys to be around each other. So when you guys get the opportunity to do this, you usually try to take it up as much as possible. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's it's the brotherhood that, you know, once you're out in the civilian world, you, you never get that. I mean, I've raced, you know, motocross and, you know, you've got all the racers and, you know, the score racers and stuff, but it's not, the, it's still not the same. Nothing comes close. Yeah. Nothing it's close. And when you see, like, when you see all of the, the guys working together to accomplish one goal and, I think the goal mainly is to get the vehicle across the finish line safely, but then, you know, winning the races and stuff like that. And you also got first timers like Kristen. And then, you know, I think Halima, was it your first time? Halima's going to join us a little bit. And Halima had her first time, Rob's wife. And when you see stuff like that, how does that make you feel? I felt pretty good because Kristen was in the back seat. She could see the screen better than I could. So I went to sleep. I let her <laughs> <fall out. laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's nap time. George, George, real quick, how old are you? How old am I? Yeah. Oh I'm 76. I'll be 77 next month. Next month. And uh, <laughs> what, what are some of your off-road accomplishments? I know you got a couple of championships tucked in your belt. I won championships on motorcycles in different classes, championships in the cars in different classes. So that's score. Oh, mo you know. Mostly in Baja, right? Mostly in Baja. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I, I, when I got out, I was racing motocross and doing some traveling, and then it got too clicky. And it was kind of a weird thing. You know, people, they say, well, where'd you come from? Where you been? You know, and you tell them, and it was like, man, they just, like you had the plague, you know, they just walk away from you. you know? Really? Yeah. Oh, you, you cannot, you cannot believe. Yeah. They no, honestly, I, I can't believe it because that statement actually frustrates me a lot. Just hearing it. Was, oh. was that because of, your, because of your service in Vietnam? Right. They said, well, yeah. where were you last year? I was in Vietnam, you know, or where were you two years ago? I was in Vietnam, you know, and, and that's, you know, bounced around with the motocross and then found the desert. And then uh, found Baja, and you know, just my whole goal is Baja. And Do you mind if we talk about that a little bit? Because I don't understand that. Like, why? What was the uh, uh, pushback? Push well, Vietnam was a super unpopular war, and it was really political. And basically, our country turned against the service members um, that was that went over there, whether they volunteered or they were drafted. And uh, it was just a really bad situation for all, which is, it, it's for an eternity, Vietnam veterans didn't talk about serving in Vietnam at all, because like when they first came back, it was just a really bad situation. Well, so, so first of all, that's fucked up. But so what does that mean that, because now it's, it's, I don't know if it's the same or not, but now it's, it's different that you guys are helping, right? You guys are making a difference. You guys are showing that they can integrate back, right? Like, What's the, the well, positive that comes from comes up now? Well, I, I think what had happened was is as time went on and, and uh, Vietnam veterans started getting into public office and so on and so forth, um, I think the Vietnam veteran community as a whole kind of came together and said, no, no generation of warfighter will be will ever be treated the way we were. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, you know, Myself, my wife, uh, you know, uh, Danny, all the combat vets here at Warfighter Made, we really get the best care that's available today. Um, when we go to a uh, when we go to a bar or something like that, you know, people find out that we're service members. They want to buy us a drink. Yeah. Um, whereas when Vietnam veterans went to a bar and they found out they're a Vietnam veteran, they probably got drinks thrown on at, on them. They were called effed up names like baby killers and sh shit like that. And then, you know, they probably threw them out. Right. So we get really good care because Vietnam veterans kind of came together and said, never again. Right. And now it's our generation of warfighter to ensure the next generation of warfighter is treated with that same respect because there never can be another generation of Vietnam veterans that were so disrespected um, dude it like it hurts me just to hear those like those things man so i can only imagine how you know george earl feels a hey, fantastic name by the way please don't change it <laughs> uh, but yeah so it's it's cool to be able to understand that right like it's not cool that you guys went through all that bullshit but it's understanding how it is now because of what you guys have done means and says a lot to everybody around you not just Rob, not just Kristen, not just Halima, who's off screen now. But when uh, when I hear those stories, it means a lot to me to be able to understand the things that you've been through in your life. And now that you're able to come back and live, uh, you know, I don't want to say vicariously, but live and have all this fun with the Warfighter guys is phenomenal. It is. It's a blast. You know, it's fun. It's it's racing. It's not the adrenaline, you know, that you get because you got to. You got to save the vehicle. <laughs> that was the first time I drove that thing was from the parking lot to the start line. So I'd never been in it before, you know, took Danny 20 miles to tell me where the, where the wheels were on that thing, you know, as far as 
I hood, well, not, the hood of the car to figure out how close I was, but you know, we never took it. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. Um, we're going to let George, we're going to let Rob do another introduction. So we got uh, Andrew McKenzie on too. What's up, Andrew? How are you? Hey, what's going on guys? How you doing? All right, Rob, give us a backstory on Homeboy. So Andrew is our brother. Uh, he's, his wife is an active duty uh, chief in the Navy. She's a corpsman. Um, they used to live here in SoCal with us, and we were introduced to Andrew. He showed up, and, uh, you know, he's, he's just got a killer work ethic, and whatever needed to be done, he jumped in, and he was helping us do it. Yeah. And, uh, and then she got stationed in Texas, and so that's where they moved, and uh, when we were doing off-road races in Baja, we hit up Andrew and said, bro, you want to be a part of this? And he's like, hell yeah. Dude, it so. dr- drove, what, 24 hours or whatever, come all the way over here. I still can't believe that, man. Like, the dedication, right? And uh, the cool part about it is, though, is I see a bunch of people on the screen, excluding me, that all have worked together in, to come across the finish line first with Beefy. But that's not something that you guys are uh, unfamiliar with, right? Like, so, George, when you're working with Andrew and Rob and Chris and Lima, everybody that was part of the team, Danny, who's not here right now, how did it feel, man? Was it just like working with all your buddies? Yeah, it just, you know, like, I don't know that George vehicle, or... but, you know, you just try to get in there and do what you can. Another set of eyes on my end. I, I'm too beat up to get underneath it, you know, but I can, I love I can spot things. I love it because George's answers are so simple, man. <laughs> and actually, what, you know, George is another set of eyes. He can't read a freaking lead nav, but <laughs> on day on day one, he uh, that night he got out of the vehicle and he pulled out his little tiny bag mag uh, pen light and he just started walking around and all of a sudden he's like, "We got a little problem." And uh, I think it was Andrew that ran around to the back and we had a lower ball joint uh, that normally has four uh, bolts holding it in, uh, being held on by one nut. And that nut had literally one thread uh, holding on to it. Totally saved you guys because you found it, right? It actually is my trophy. Oh, really? This is it? You got it? You got it here? Yeah. Show Facebook. Dude, flip it around. Show how big that is. Dude, that thing's hammered. (laughs) So this is part of Beefy. That's part of Beefy. That was a lot before. So who found this and who took it out? Was it George? Or was it both of them? I spotted it. Found it. And then Andrew. He's Good big God. Andrew fixed this up. <laughs> he, he fixed it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, and the, the threads on that sucker are smoked, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's your trophy. That's man. trophy. So Rob had an eight trophies over here of all his wins, and then that Kristen gets the best one of all. All of, all of our wins. Yeah, all of you guys' wins. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chris's trophy, yes, you see. Uh, Andrew, how was it, man? Was it totally worth the 48 hours worth of driving? Oh, totally worth it. I would do it again. If Rob had and, another race actually, hold on a minute, Andrew. I just want to let you know that your wife just logged in. So, uh, you know, it's, it's an A on driving her truck A, okay? <laughs> What's up, CC? All right, Andrew, continue. <laughs> no, it's uh, a little foggy. Though. There we go. Oh, no. Andrew did not drive your truck for 48 hours. He was just at the gas station. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, on the way there, it wasn't that bad. It was smooth sailing. But on the way back home, that was a uh, tough one because I was already tired and exhausted. And I had to stop and uh, rest. Uh, you know, I couldn't, I guess, couldn't keep on going a couple of times. Yeah, but I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you realize what uh, what your body can handle, man. Because that's a that's gnarly, especially the drive to Texas too. It's so freaking boring. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, super boring. Uh, a couple spots that had some weather. It was uh, raining and it was nighttime and I was uh, one way traffic, so there's cars coming at me at night while it's raining. So you know, I had to find a spot to pull off on the side of the road and you know I spent some good time. Uh, one time I was in the middle of the pretty much a forest it seemed like and uh, I got out at night. Uh, it was pitch dark. You couldn't see like a friend of my hand. And next morning uh, uh, I noticed there's footsteps. I think there's a uh, moose or I don't know, bear or something. Whoa. But it was pretty cool. Yeah. You had the 
chupacabra. I you have like a skinwalker yeah. coming around you, bro. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, you come home victorious from Nora, and then all of a sudden, it's like... And yeah. it's eaten by E.T. R.I.P. <laughs> Andrew meets Bigfoot. <laughs> oh. I, but I was, I was, I was a cool drive home, but... Uh, the experience that Nora was, uh, you know, was one of a lifetime. It was awesome uh, going over there with, you know, the vets and taking the Humvee. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a cool thing to do. So. Rob, was that his first time down there? No, Andrew's been with us a bunch of times. We, um, I think the first time he came with us, uh, we did the Nora 500. 500. And it was Danny and I, and then we had two female vets. We had Jackie Carasosa. And Kirstie Ennis. Yeah. And we won our class that year. Oh, I remember that. And then he came back for the 1,000, our first year with Beefy. Um, and we won that. And then this year for the 1,000, we took uh, Doom Buggy, our Warfighter Maids, uh, Chenet DR3 uh, light strike yeah. vehicle. Yep. And we blew an engine going into Bay of L.A. So yeah, this time around it was this was my fourth time around, I believe. Or, yeah, and then we we voted as an organization to any off road race that we we're we we're going to do from here on out. We're going to bring Andrew and hopefully his wife CC uh, will come too because if CC's still on uh, for the mid four hundred, we are. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, it. There we are. For the mid four hundred, we're we're putting together an all female veteran. Uh, active duty service member female team. No and way. Yeah. We're going to race the blazer that was Dude. donated to us. So that's going to be awesome. And uh, we're really excited about that. We want his wife to drive, but we want Andrew to help help us pit. And uh, But Andrew's been down with us a bunch. And this trip was the first time that uh, we got him in as a uh, co dog and he navigated for us. And I actually drove. And he looked at me at one point, and he's like, hey, man, did you have any pucker moments? And I was like, yeah, there was this one time we were going up a hill. Uh, <laughs> I lost track of the front end, and I dipped the tire off the edge, and I thought we hit a, a, we were going to hit a rut and just rip the suspension off. Uh-huh. And I was like, what about you, Andrew? Do you have any pucker moments? What did you say? <laughs> I don't remember what I said. Probably, probably the jump. Remember, remember <laughs> it was, landing. It was it was a jump. So <laughs> this picture, that, that picture, that's a, that's Andrew and I. <laughs> that's you guys' pucker moment. <laughs> that was Andrew's pucker moment right there. He's like, man, I thought we were going to end over end on that thing. Yeah. Dude, I still can't believe that that beefy can send it that hard. Yeah, we, me and Rob talked about that jump uh, right at the beginning of the race, and uh, we we're looking at the at the maps and stuff. So we. Planned it, make sure we had a, enough speed going into it. And I think we hit it pretty good. <laughs> you guys had it all planned out. Yeah. I think there's a little video that you guys sent of it. I mean, this might be a different video, but this one's pretty awesome and hilarious at the same time, too. Well, for those that can't tell, uh, zooms out. while I'm airborne, I got my, I'm throwing the number one. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> you got this. <laughs> I just think about it and I'm like, oh my God, that's going to be so crazy if yeah, that thing. Right there. right there. I thought we were going to flip over. That's, <laughs> that's what it looks like with the suspension compress. Dude. Oh, that's yeah, uh, pretty good. Surprisingly. What do they have? They have the Tough Tuesday. Tough Tuesday. So <laughs> that's pretty freaking tough. That's pretty yeah. tough right there. Yeah, actually, yeah, I don't think anybody's ever good. posted a Humvee fully tucked on the Tuck Tuesday. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. This could be a first on Instagram. Here, I, know of, I know of one video that a couple of service members, I don't know if they were Army or Marines, they jumped a Humvee, one of the, like, when the Humvees first came out, and they filmed it on, like, an old VHS recorder. And these guys hit this jump and aired this thing out so big. And when they landed, it basically destroyed the Humvee. And <laughs> just blew it into pieces? Blew it into pieces. The kids who were in it, or the guys who were in it, all got freaking massive amounts of trouble. And the, <laughs> the Humvee was a total loss. But ours is a little more built up than, <laughs> than that one. <laughs> they got Instagram famous. Uh, all right, so the question that I have if CC's still on, was uh, because you took her truck, it did Rob have to offer it up that he's got to have the all-female team now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's cool with me. It's her truck. 
<laughs> that's that's super cool, man. I can't wait to see that. So, do you already have people that are like signing up for it? Yeah, well, we already have a uh, base in mind. Okay. Uh, two active duty female Marines, uh, but one is getting orders, and she doesn't know if she'll be able to uh, to make the race. But the other one's definitely in. Uh, we really want CC to be a part of it. Trying to talk a uh, little bit. Oh, hey, look, she is there. Hey, <laughs> <you up>, <laughs> Hi, CC. She's like, I'm out. <laughs> uh, you know, we're talking about Halima doing it, but Halima's kind of iffy. She, she thought it was cool. She she on the fence about it. So, for those that don't, can, can you swap out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Halima's going to come in here real quick, too. So, uh, let's stand up, so people can see you. <laughs> Rob's gonna get his butt kicked later. <laughs> so, so this is my wife Lima. She did 22 years in the Marines. Uh, her and I have been married for almost 30 years, and uh, she is an outstanding five feet tall. And <laughs> Danny worked like hell to adapt the pedals in Beefy to give her an opportunity to drive. And unfortunately, her height is in her all her five walking feet. Or in her torso, they're not in her legs. So even with extensions, it still didn't really work. So, uh, but you, got, you did drive the Halima, or no? No, no, no. No, I, I can't reach the pedals. She, she was. <laughs> I she can't was, stomp it all the way down and get the Humvee going and still see over. Uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> she was my nav navigator the whole time. How was that though? <laughs> I thought we were going to end up divorced. Uh, I swear to God, I still think navigation is the hardest thing on the planet. I'm so glad we didn't. <laughs> we no, didn't she, divorced. she did really good. Uh, she did excellent navigating. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. First time being. Yeah. Which, with, phenomenal. With George saying that, that's got to mean a lot too, right? Because he like, he's been there and done that. Yeah. Man, that's so cool. Did you guys both have fun navigating? No, oh, she did all the navigating. That was Chris. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It's it's totally different when you have to navigate. Oh, Chris. Did. Okay, I got it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Navigating is so hard, man. How did you feel doing it, Lima? There was a few times where we went off track a little bit. Speak up a little more. There was a few times where we went off track, and I had to guide him back on track onto the. Wait, whose so fault I was it getting off track? It's it's always my fault. <laughs> <laughs> And, that, and that's not necessarily, you know, that, well, first of all, that's a husband wife thing. That's always my fault. But uh, <laughs> no, she, she'd be like, hey, you know, uh, stay left at the trail. And, you know, we come up and there'd be multiple lefts, right? So I would just pick one and go. And, and after a couple seconds, she'd be like, you're not on, you're not on the magenta line. You're not on course. And so... At one point, I was like, "Man, I can't cross over this big ditch yeah. to get on course." You got to wait. Like, and all of a sudden, just like magic, she's like, "Keep going, keep going. I, it, it'll, it'll converge, right?" And so I just kept going, and sure enough, it, it converged. And Dang, it converged. good. Did they have VCPs that you got to check too, or no? Yeah, they well, they have known VCPs, and then they have hidden VCPs. Oh, okay. And I think we missed one on day one, and we got a ten minute penalty, but whatever. So uh, John Lewis from Desert Squadron just commented in and said, "So what I heard is." Uh, Rob didn't listen to the call outs from Lima. That's, that's, that's pretty accurate, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. We appreciate that. John from Desert Squadron. Uh oh, somebody's getting the wrath from Rob now. Uh, was it cool to see the girls doing all that stuff, George? Because it seems like to me, like that, obviously, it was it was neat for you. Like it was like, a, I don't know, a new beginning, so to speak, where you're seeing the, the girls doing all this stuff. Right. It was, they were, they did a hell of a job. Let me tell you, I, I was impressed because <laughs> they, they were taking the hits. You know, that's all I can tell you. Danny beat the crap out of her, but you know, was <laughs> Wait, beat, beat the crap out of Chris. Wow. <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, yeah. She took a beating back there. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's so funny. So I can only imagine, like, uh, when Chris just left and she's off screen now, but uh, Danny's like, all right, she's sitting in the back. She's never going to be able to say anything. She's racing. I just got to go for it and just show her what I'm all about. <laughs> that's exactly what he did. Yeah, that's it, too. And, and, and I'm, trying to, 
I kind of had that same mentality when Halima, you know, 10 years we've been running Warfighter Made and, you know, she's come out and done done things with us, but this is the first off-road race. This is the, the, the first time that she's ever jumped in a vehicle with Warfighter Made. And, you know, all these years, you know, I think most people know my story. I didn't grow up in off-road. I wasn't into off-road. Uh, Adam Fitzo from OTFF got us into off-road. And, um, you know, so once once I got it all wrapped, uh, wrapped up in the dirt life, then I'm coming home telling her all about it. Yep. And, you know, she is kind of like, uh, uh-huh, that's nice, okay. And so when she jumped in as, as my co-dog, uh, you know, my, the mentality is, oh, let's let's put this thing through some paces. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, probably that jump at the very beginning on day one and, and some other issues, we had uh, some hard parts break. Uh-huh. So we had to uh, take it easy. Tone it down a little bit? Yeah, tone it down significantly. You and, you and Danny are just doing too much beefy. How was it, though, Lima? Because to me, that seems like a, well, first of all, it's a really cool opportunity. I think anybody watching or listening to this will, like, want to get in the passenger seat, right? But, like, for you, it's two twofold, right? Finally, after a bunch of years, you get to experience it. Well, actually, threefold. You get to be with your husband. And then third, it's your first time going through a massive off-road race like this. It was absolutely by far one of the best experiences I think we've ever had as a couple. You know, the uh, Humvee, Beefy, is definitely military, yep. but it doesn't ride like military Humvees, okay? They've done quite a bit of work to it, especially Danny. They've done so much work to it, and with the seats that are in it, it, it rides like a dream. It's not at all like the typical military Humvee. Did you have any pucker moments? Uh, no, I just kept my eyes on the, la- on the navigation and I was good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't focus on the, on the trail, right? <laughs> That's such a cool opportunity. <laughs> Say that again, Andrew. You can't see over the windshield. <laughs> oh! oh He's absolutely right. I even it. sat on a cushion, okay, <laughs> to be able to help. I sat up a little bit higher, but I still couldn't see over the windshield. The, the lead nav was like, the top of the lead nav was like right here on her face. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's hilarious, but still, you had a good time, though, right? It was a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a moment like what Crystal was saying that was your favorite? Uh, no, I, I think overall, for me, the whole experience was just beautiful. What does it do, like, uh, and I wanted to ask Kristen this, too, we can ask her later, but what, what does it do, um, since you get to experience it, to understand what, like, George and Andrew and all the other uh, vets that get to have the, those same experiences, what does it do to connect you with them? Because now you're experiencing what they get to experience because of what Warfighter is providing. Oh, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, talking to Andrew, talking to Danny, talking to George on the course or while we're sitting there pitting for the course or even in the vehicle while driving with them or sitting passenger with them uh it was just a brand new experience but it brought all of us tighter together yeah because you you work together so tightly right so like whenever whenever i think about that how many correlations off-road racing has and i've never been a marine or army or anything like that but or any type of active duty it always seems to me like when i talk with you guys like it's really closely knit Oh, it is. It's a tighter bond. Yeah. Do you see a lot of those same things, George? I do. I do. It's missed. But, you know, when a group gets together, it's pretty neat. But I don't know everybody. I, I don't know, you know, their their issues, but I'm, you know, learning them slowly. George is a, a is a superstar when you go down to Baja. Yeah. He, he can't walk very far without people stopping him and, and uh, you know, wanting to swap sea stories with them or or uh or a drink. do a shot of tequila with them or you know whatever i i was fortunate enough to be able to do a couple shots of tequila i was gonna George. say does everybody follow closely along to get free shots yes yes, <laughs> yes we do yep. <laughs> especially with george so oh that's super cool man that must be pretty meaningful for you then to be able to share those experiences with all the warfighter guys george oh it is you know and it was fun with danny because i was showing him a lot of the shortcuts that you know i'd built in the past made in the past you know back 30 40 years ago then now they're part of the course you know so yeah. i tell them when they're coming up and boom there they are but now they're the course 
So it's pretty interesting. It, it's, it is kind of crazy. I've actually heard a lot of those same stories too, um, going pre-running from some other people. It's pretty bad. Uh, yeah, John Hubbard said, uh, never miss the taco shop. <laughs> never, never miss the taco We went there. The tacos are fantastic. Oh, did you get Valley Tea. Oh, Valley, Valley Tea. tea. Yeah. We went to Valley Tea. Yeah, yeah, Valley Tea is pretty good, man. What was your favorite tacos down there, Andrew? Oh, the Valley Tea tacos for sure. Uh, the, what do they call them? The, the cheese tacos. Real oh, the queso. Queso. queso taco. Yeah, really good. Uh, did you have a, a a funnest time like when we asked Salima and when we asked Kristen? Like, what was your favorite part of it being down there? I mean, oh, other than the camaraderie, because I know that that's what's going to be the most thing for everybody. Actually, looking back at it, the funnest time probably working on the cars, like between the races, between the days. I know the, when we we're at that moment, it's not that fun, but looking back at it. You know, like, well, that was uh, probably when it brought us all back together, and it was uh, kind of fun for me, you know. Be- Beefy uh, was experiencing a weird problem where it was sucking uh, air into the fuel system. Probably because you were slamming her into the ground like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Andrew was the one that figured it out right away. And uh, so we just made a determined ter- determination that we weren't going to shut Beefy off you know, during the day, uh, because it, that's when it seemed like it happened when you shut it off and then start it back up. Um, but I think Andrew's, Andrew's the type of guy that I think, uh, he enjoys problem solving. Yeah. That, that stuff where yeah. I get, I get frustrated and, uh, you know, that's not my forte and that's where Andrew thrives. Well, dude, yeah, just like we said at the beginning, teamwork makes a dream work, right? Um, all right, Rob, so give me a little bit of a backstory on this photo here. Who is driving? Who was in the car? George is driving. Uh, Danny is his co-dog. And uh, George, can you see that? Yeah, that's down on the beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Now, that's after. <laughs> Had that torsion bar problem, so we're just cruising. (laughs) That's that's one of the most like iconic spots. Uh, Well, actually, George, give us a little bit more of a an understanding of this. Like you make it sound like it's it's something other other people uh, can just see, right? But like because you've done it so many times. But to me, that's a spot that I would love to be able to race and to be able to experience. Well, if you could have looked out the the windshield out the front of it, you will see. (laughs) <laughs> about 50 60 miles of beach you know in the bluffs and not a person on it or not a house so that's 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 nothing that's that's nothing okay well it's something to us <laughs> uh john Huffers actually said the farther oh well, probably what you were just saying george it's farther down south you get on the peninsula uh the more beautiful all that scenery gets absolutely oh you bet you bet <laughs> There, there's something that I keep I keep trying to tell, you know, I was trying to explain to Halima about the how beautiful Baja is and, and it's it's really you don't you don't get an idea of how beautiful it is until you're physically down there yep. seeing it for your own eyes, you know. And then and then what also makes Baja so awesome is the people. Yeah. The people are just fantastic and they're all off roaders at heart too. And you can be flying down the course and there's a whole bunch of people lined up that you're in the middle of nowhere and somehow that's their spot they drove out to it they got a whole you know camp set up and and they're they're, they're just there to enjoy uh some off-road racing with bob yeah and you're not joking too because you could be like two hours down a dirt road and haven't seen anybody and not even a snake for like god knows an hour and then all of a sudden you see everybody right yep. all right give us a uh who was in the car at this time? Well, that's down. Going, that's going through the sill? I think. That's going it. through the sill? Yeah, I think that's George here. Yeah, was that you, George, in the vehicle at that time? That's down by Aaron Dara. Give us a little bit of, because this looks like a pretty gnarly uh, little silt bed and all that stuff. Because there was one spot that Kristen was telling me about, or who was somebody, Rob, maybe you were telling me about it. Uh, or no, I think it was you, George, that was telling me about it, that you guys just cruised through it. Right. Yeah, just and everybody it. else was having all kinds of issues. Uh, just, I don't know. Just <laughs> through it. Yeah. yeah, we drove through it. 
We have four wheel drive. <laughs> Magnetic rewards. <laughs> See, back in the day when George was winning uh, championships, they didn't really have a big interview process. So they were just like, George, congratulations. How's it feel? It yes. feels good. <laughs> okay, thank you, George Earl. Fantastic. Here's, here's your 1974 Baja 1000 winner. Yeah, well, John, actually, John Huffer just said that too. Baja, sir, is uh, stunning, but there is a lot of silt beds. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, there's a lot of silt down there. Like when I see something like this, I know because I've seen Beefy in the flesh. Um, Beefy's a massive vehicle, and that makes it look like a puny little Volkswagen, right? Like that makes it look small. So I can only imagine what driving through that stuff feels like in a massive vehicle like that. And second, how insanely, well, how insane the course was right there. Well, it's actually, it actually wasn't that bad uh, because. Says the tall guy. Yeah. Okay. No, don't listen. That, as, the silk, <laughs> as the silk comes over the hood and smacks her directly in the face, it hits me right here in my nipples. So. <laughs> there were so many points on the course on the, on the short portion of it that I was on a, you know, a driving for the, a driving, driving. co-dogging for this guy. Uh, where my feet don't reach the floor. I can't brace against the floor, okay? I'm bracing, I'm, I'm bracing against the side of the door, okay? And so it's like one foot on there and that's it. This is her feet. This is her feet right here. She's just like, oh. She's like, oh. Yeah, th thanks, oh, thanks Kristen. <laughs> Uh, all right, so again, then give us a little bit of an understanding of where this was. This looks like over the summit, right? That's Pine Forest. It's Pine Forest, yeah. yeah. Danny's driving, George is a co-dog, and Chris is actually sitting third seat behind Oh, him. so you were in there at the way going through the Pine Forest, Chris? Yeah, yeah this that, is the real... I think that's just after that real tight squeeze area where uh, we took yeah. off the door hinge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. That's actually one of my favorite parts of uh, um, Ensenada, going through all that stuff up there. I love it up there, man. It's good because it goes from like, well, depending on time of year, 110 down in the valley all the way up to it's just like whatever, let's just say 70 degrees or something. It's it's so nice up there. What was your favorite part of the course this year, George? Any of it? <laughs> all of it? <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to just change the way I talk from now on. Just be straight, simple, and direct. Well, we, the, the funny thing was is, is we had to make an audible because originally what was supposed to happen is Danny. Yeah, we tell everybody what audible is real quick. We, we changed our plan the <laughs> day of the course uh, or the day of the start because what was originally going to happen was um, Danny and George were going to start and then – they were gonna hand the vehicle off to Halim and I. And the first roadmaps that came out, they had them coming off the start and basically going clockwise around the course. And then later maps we got was counterclockwise. Oh, so, crap, really? Yeah, so we made a call last minute, like, okay, cause Danny really wanted to drive Pine Forest cause I've done it before and he hasn't. So we're like, okay, uh, Myself and Andrew, we're going to start. Uh, we're going to hand up the car off to Danny and George, and then they're going to take it into the Pine Forest. And then when we got to the the driver changeover spot, there's Kristen all suited up, ready to go, flipping her hair, and <laughs> jumped in there, and the three of them took off. So, dude, but the, like, and well, that's like that's the nature of Baja, right? Like. You guys got a little bit of time to be able to change your plan, but you can change plans anytime. Yeah. Adjust. Yeah, adjust. Yeah. And then so day two, uh, we were supposed to – George, where where did I tell you guys to get gas at? What was the name of that town down there? Down by Colonet. Colonet. Uh, we were supposed to do our driver changeover at Colonet. And for those that are familiar with Baja, you know, Colonet, Highway 1, then there was a, a – transfer uh, a race portion from Highway 1 to Highway 3, which ended up in Valley T, uh, Valley Day, Trinidad. And um, I really wanted everybody to be able to get tacos in Valley T. Yep. So I said, hey, instead of doing the changeover in Colette, let's just go ahead and let George do that transit as well. 
And then we'll just do the changeover in Valley T, which is what we did, and it worked out well. So, uh, all right, we're going to wind it down here a little bit. Uh, that was at the finish line, I'm assuming, right? Or no, it's at Tech? Yep, day one. Day one. Yeah, that's a good picture, man. Or Tech, you're right. Tech. Yeah. That's a really good picture. Um, what's the next plans for you guys? I didn't, I, this is Warfighter made or George? Well, with all these guys, because it sounds like you guys got a bunch of stuff coming up. Like, well, maybe that may be a better question. Where's Beefy going to be next? When are these guys going to race next? Like, Well, so uh, for Warfighter made, we have an adrenaline therapy Saturday coming up on the 22nd of October. Well, we're going to talk about that stuff in just a second here. But, yeah, so what about the race? Guys? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's your question. Uh, uh, we're just finding on the mint. And the mint is gonna. We're gonna have Andrew, and I think I think George just had a heart attack. Oh, there he is! <laughs> Coming in, oh, that's Trump, twenty twenty four. Hard so, early. <laughs> the mint four hundred, and uh, the reason I was asking what you guys are gonna do next is because I was gonna segue into how much time Andrew is gonna spend in the damn <laughs> CC truck driving across the fucking country. Again, back next week. Well, for that race, we'll uh, we probably fly them both in. And, oh, that'd yeah, be cool. Yeah, so they don't have to drive. But there we go. Yeah, that'll be nice. Save the miles on CC's truck. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you guys had a good time, man. And uh, it's always impressive to, for me to understand. Uh, it takes so much to get a vehicle across the finish line. It doesn't matter what vehicle it is. Uh, but the amount of teamwork that you guys have put it getting put together, like. George clearly makes it that easy, man of little words, but very direct. And then all of you guys are humble and you guys don't like give me the understanding of the story on how much shit actually went down through that whole race. And I know there was a lot. So it's awesome to be able to see that. I think it's really cool that you guys all did that as a team. When they were doing that last section, we're driving down the highway and I said, they're getting rained on. I said, no, they're not. They get, you guys get rained on? Four. <laughs> Ford on. Oh yes. And and I've never I've never raced in the rain like that before. So, you know, I had my rag in this hand, hand on the steering wheel, and I'm just going like this the yep. whole time. And literally at like 15 miles an hour, because I couldn't see anything. And then when you're when your microfiber is soaking wet, it's just like splitting water all over your face. Well that then then I was holding it up as soon as it stopped raining, now I'm holding it up to let the microfiber dry. <laughs> that's the way it goes huh yeah uh have you been in a passenger seat or driver's seat yet andrew oh uh, yeah i was uh co-driving for uh rob for the first leg of the race oh that's right that's what you guys said yeah my bad uh and then every uh every time we go out there andrew's always the one that it's it's like okay we got to take the vehicle to to tech or wherever and coordinator you can't even finish the sentence and andrew's already sitting and he's got to start it up He's like, all right, who's, who's coming with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just taking the tag. We're good. If you guys aren't here, you guys are out. Yeah. Uh, that's good, man. Teamwork makes the dream work. I appreciate you guys coming on. We're good. Or unless you guys want to talk about adrenaline therapy. I know, Andrew, you're two hours ahead, so I don't know what time you got to hit the sack. Yeah, we're, we're about nine, almost well, it's like 8.30 over here. So, um, well, you guys are more than welcome to stay on, or you guys can bail out. But we're going to talk about some uh, adrenaline therapy because Rob and all the guys at Warfighter made to that. Have you been to any of those before, George? Yes, I have. They're pretty. What'd nice. you think? Yeah, I thought it was a pretty neat deal. I really did. Uh, so let's uh, let's explain what that is, Rob. So um, I've been out to a couple of them as well, but maybe you could give uh, an understanding of what that actually is. Okay, Andrew, you want to check out, bro? Yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for having thanks, me. Thanks, Here, thanks for coming on, brother. Thanks, Andrew. Bye, Andrew. Until next time. We'll see you later. You yeah. want to switch with Kristen so that yes. uh, she can talk about it? Hey, why don't you two come up here? <laughs> no, you guys go out. ahead. Um, so, yeah, give us a little bit of a better understanding of what Adrenaline Therapy Saturday is, because a lot of people already know, but just in case. Yeah, so for those that don't know, Adrenaline Therapy is uh, Warfighter made rents an off-road track out in Anza, California. Uh, you know, we're sponsored by Polaris Razor, so we bring a bunch of razors out there, and uh, we invite all vets from all branches and all eras, uh, specifically our Vietnam vets, and we encourage those veterans to bring their family members, and uh, it's about putting those vets behind the wheel 
and letting them go out and just have a good time with their family, with, you know, other vets, whatever the case may be. Um, what George is showing right now is pictures from the Bolt program, uh, which we just wrapped up here a couple weeks ago. And uh, I'll let Kristen, because her and her husband mastermind Bolt, I'll let her explain it. Uh, so um, let me see here. Earlier in the year, we were just having a conversation. You know, Danny and I were having a conversation about um, doing something more for the kids because, you know, everything that we do is family oriented, but we wanted to be something specific for the kids, uh, veterans and military families. And, and Danny basically was saying, you know, I wish that there was something specific you know, when I was deployed and my kids were going through a hard time that could have really helped them. And I said, well, why don't we come up with something? And we started talking about it, like, what could we do? And we came up with, you know, why not have the children of our veterans come into Warfighter Made, um, do it over a course of maybe a summer kind of program where they come in and they learn everything about a Polaris machine yep. for them, for their size, which we ended up with the 170 for that. And uh, it was teaching them, you know, it was a STEM program, first of all, uh, STEM being science, technology, engineering, and mathematics driven program. So, you know, a lot of things that in traditional education right now are lacking. You know, you don't have wood shop in class anymore. You don't have those kind of shops in the high school anymore, but it really needs to still be emphasized that those are good trades, you know, whether kids want to go to technical trades, schools, or fab right. schools, whatever. Well, look who we're talking to. Yeah. And so uh, we decided to put that program together. So. You know, we, we pitched it to Rob and said, hey, what would you think about incorporating a youth program into Warfighter Made? And, I mean, it was like, done. That's it. You know, let's do it. And so we came up with Bolt Building Off-Road Leaders of Tomorrow. It was a 12-week program that started at the beginning of June and ended in September. And uh, it was um, it was awesome. You know, the first 15 minutes of the class, we wanted to make sure we focused on character development aspects. And so the kids were being taught about perseverance and self-discipline, what those words mean and then they were given an exercise to do over the week's break that they'd have to come back and, and in order to really ingrate it into them what they what those words mean as far as building character. Um, that was the building the leaders part of it. And then they were spending 45 minutes to an hour and a half in the shop. And I mean, these kids are changing tires. They know what an impact gun is. You know, they, they can check tire pressure and understand PSI and adjust accordingly. So, I mean, it was a very hands-on intense course. Um, for the kids, uh, taught obviously at their level, the ages were six to 12, but they soaked it up like a sponge and they loved it. But I, were you chime in? Well, we had an emphasis on all that and we had an emphasis on environmental impact uh, to ensure that, you know, our off-road trails uh, are respected and taken care of so they stay open for them in the future. Exactly. And we're very fortunate to have uh, a Fox Factory Initiative um, Trail Trust um, support us with that. And um, as well as Tread Lightly provided yeah. us some, from some information, some educational materials and said, hey, listen, this is the best way to, to go about it so they can comprehend it and take it and grasp it at their at their level, you know, and apply it. And, you know, it, it was a lot of different aspects, but all things that are really just about making sure that these kids feel like, for one, they're supported. Um, you know, not just Warfighter Made being for their parents, but Warfighter Made being fully encompassing the entire family. Yeah. Because here's the reality, and I've learned this through with, with my marriage with Danny, PTSD does not just affect the veteran. It trickles down right into every other family member that lives within that home. And Sometimes it affects the family members more. Exactly. Because, I mean, if you think about it, if a child doesn't feel comfortable talking to a parent because they feel it's going to be just more of a burden or more heaviness on the parent who's already struggling, they may feel the need to yeah. suppress that. Um, and so we wanted to make sure we created a, a program where they were going to feel supported. But not only that, be with other military families where those kids might have some things in common. It gives right? an opportunity for just massive connection. Absolutely. I mean, we talk about camaraderie and how important it is here with our veterans, and I don't think our children are any different. You know, they have to have that support. And it was amazing. I mean, we have pictures, and some of them are on your phone. You know, we're, we did adrenaline there, uh, pardon me, ATS on September 24th, and it was the bulk graduation, and it was our opportunity to let those kids shine. They were on stage giving interviews. Um, yeah, that's all of them on stage there. But what was the, the best part of that program on that day? was the fact that every single one of those kids, while they were waiting for their classmate to take their two laps around the track, demonstrating what they could do as far as driving the vehicle, they were all standing on the sidelines, cheering them in. And as soon as they got out of that vehicle, they were all hugging on each other and everything. So these kids started 
you know, very shy and timid, not really knowing each other. And by the end of the course, I mean, I love this picture. This just says it all. That's all of them waiting for the very last driver, Aaliyah, to come in. She was the last student to finish the, the two laps and then to do her interview on the stage. And that's all of them just waiting for her to bring it home. Dude, that's so cool. Isn't it? So, what? I, yeah, what other things I was going to ask George, too, is, like, he's already been to Adrenaline Therapy Saturdays and uh, obviously goes to the races with you guys. Like, when I hear the stories, George, like, it's all-encompassing, right? Because it goes the kids, the parents, the vets, back to – it's just everybody, right? And then fulfilling all the needs of each individual person and showing the way to the little kids, like – when you see that, what does it remind you of? Does it remind you of being a Marine or does it, you know, just good human humanitarian efforts? No, that's a great humanitarian effort. The only thing that that the kids don't realize is, you know, what our basic freedoms are. And they haven't been around long enough to know what we used to have as far as the desert and off-road and what's been taken away from us. That's you know, a good point. That's what they, I think there's where they need to, have a little boost you know because they're just that's a really good point mm -hmm. and are you, you can, you're able to show them that so what we incorporate is the importance of respecting the environment and uh, and respecting the uh, ecosystem so knowing why it's important to stay on trails and to respect the rules and the laws that are put in place in order for trails and and, and places that we can go to still be preserved so they don't get damaged so they don't get shut down yeah. so that the generations you know far ahead of us are still going to be able to enjoy those same things that you know were once enjoyed before that's such a great way to do it too though because like when I think about what you guys are saying, like you can sign a petition a million times, right? But mm -hmm. that only affects that individual uh, time frame. But if you're breeding them from the ground up to be able to understand that and to push for it the whole time, that's a massive effort. Well, and it, but it's good though. Yeah. It is good. Well, it is good. But the way I feel about it is they they need some history too. Like we used to be able to do this. Now we can't. Yeah, you know, and the rights being taken away from us, and they, most of the people today don't really realize what's going on. Yeah, well, and you could call it night, night being naive or anything, but like, there's a lot of stuff that I'm learning just in this small conversation that I could do better, right, or that I didn't know in the past. So what you don't know is what you don't know, right? You're you don't know what you don't know. So like, just learning all this stuff makes a big difference. So the fact that you guys are teaching the young ones this stuff is massive, right? Well, I mean, we're also coming into, you know, Pismo. They're trying to shut down Pismo. And we know our sponsors, Rugged Radios, are really fighting to try and keep that open, not only because that's their backyard, but because Pismo is a historic place to yeah. enjoy, you know, off-road. Um, you know, all the, all the places that we enjoy today, uh, Pismo, Glamis, Ocotillo, you know, all those places could be taken from us at any given time yep. if the government deems we're not taking care of it and they could be like, that's it, no more, we're done. Exactly. Which is what George is saying that, you know, there's places that he probably used to ride that is now a mini mall. I remember, I remember one time, and it didn't even have anything to do with, like, they just wanted to take away part of the dunes from us. So they said there was a little beetle out there that was endangered. You can't ride there anymore. Sorry. Exactly. So they just cut off. Cut off a million acres or whatever it was in the dunes. Yep. All the time. Yeah, it's wild. Well, I'm glad you guys are doing that. Um, and then, so when is the next Adrenaline Therapy Saturday? Because I always recommend any veterans that can get out there and check it out to go out there and sign up and come and roll and come. Is it hard for you to get people to do that, like to take the, the initiative to go and roll and to come out there? Because you guys are getting some big turnouts, but I would like to see it help the people that don't want to get out there, like that should get pushed to come out. Well, the, the issue, well, first and foremost, October 22nd is our next drone therapy Saturday. And it, again, it's all vets, all branches, all eras. Um, and we're, we encourage those vets to invite their families. We're also doing this uh, last Adrenaline Therapy Saturday of 2022, we're also inviting law enforcement and their families uh, to come out. We really want to show a little love to our, you know, uh, servicemen, well, to, to the, the men and women that basically protect our families when the military is off protecting you know, America's freedoms. Yep. So we want to give a little love back to the law, to the law enforcement community. So uh, any current officers, uh, 
We're still working through some of the details, but we want you guys to come out. The way Adrenaline Therapy Saturdays work is we have a whole host of Polaris racers out there that we bring out that are for the for use of the veterans and uh, the law enforcement personnel. Um, we then bring out a whole host of professional racers that are there solely to give rides to the family members, uh, the spouses, the kids, and the vets if they want to, to ride along to the police officers, whatever the case may be. Um, you and, should go on at Warfighter Made on Instagram and check it out because there's all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, you usually, usually have a really good, really good time. That looks like the turnout of the last adrenaline therapy. That was our last adrenaline therapy. Day, Dude, yeah. there is a lot of people out there, man. It's and just imagine how much that trickles down all those people changing everybody else's lives that they're associated with. Yeah, that's what we're trying. You know, and, and really what these adrenaline therapies do for the veterans um, and for law enforcement too is is that you're being introduced to new vets. Family members of veterans are being introduced to new family members of veterans. And we're just trying to create a, a bigger network for, uh, you know, vets, family members, police officers to go and um, basically have, have that support each other, have that network. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. And, and uh, October 22nd, it's at Rex Fence Off Road Park in Anza, California. If uh, any vets or uh, law enforcement are interested in attending, all you got to do is go to warfightermade.org forward slash events or go to warfightermade.org and find the events page uh, or the event tab at the top of the page. Click on that. Find ATS, Adrenaline Therapy Saturday, October 22nd. And click on it. You got to do two things. You got to uh, register and you got to sign the waiver. You have to do those two things. Law enforcement, we're still working through. We ha there has to be a verification process. So we're still kind of working through how we're going to verify. Uh, we're talking to a lot of active duty police officers right now to figure out what the best way to do that is. Um, but we want your families to come out. Uh, it, the event, you have to be there at 830 in the morning. Again, in Anza, California, Rex Fence Off Road Park. Um, Always reach out to the guys at Warfighter Made to get more uh, information because yeah. they can help you and yeah. iron out the details. Rob, uh, John from Desert Squadron asked, what about volunteers for Adrenaline Therapy Saturdays? We can always use volunteers for Adrenaline Therapy Saturday. Uh, we need track workers uh, because we have track flaggers out there. Um, we Would you like an announcer because your girl just volunteered? Did he just volunteer to announce? Yeah. That's a five-hour drive. <laughs> the other, George would be asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> what is the guy doing? No, no, kid, you're doing it all wrong. All you have to do is say yes or no. Um, I have. Yeah, always, uh, again, you can go to warfightermade.org to volunteer. Uh, there's a specific tab for that. Um, I just want to throw it out. If you volunteer, we're really relying on you, so... You know, if you wake up Saturday morning and you just don't feel it and you don't come, you're, you're making it really hard yeah, on us. If is, people really just ghost you like that, that's messed yeah, up, dude. That actually happens a lot. Don't do that. Don't ghost them. If you could, if you make a commitment, follow through. We have, we have a dedicated crew of of uh, volunteers. Uh, the Hodleys are always out there. Uh, we have North County Crawlers. That I think always, every time I've been out there, Halima's been out there, too. Halima's always out there. You, you know Halima's out there because you always hear her laugh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we just have a dedicated. Well, I, I just got a joke. You can't always see her, but you can hear her laugh. You're always, <laughs> you're always here. And then I, I say the same dad jokes every time. I'll be like, you know, oh, you got my wife. Where's my wife at? Stand up, Lima. She is standing up. Whatever. Anyways, um, yeah. So volunteers, thanks, John. Uh, you can go to warfightermate.org, uh, and then when you register, you register as a volunteer. Come help us out. We cater the old whole thing for food. Um, I think we're going to do the, the good old pizza thing again. Uh, we'll have, you know, drinks and stuff out there, but we highly encourage you to bring a shade structure like a 10 by 10 or an umbrella. Um, we highly encourage you to bring your own snacks, your own water, um, and a positive mental attitude and just be ready to have a whole bunch of fun. Yeah. It's so cool going out there. Oh, and then the pro drivers that we have out, I, I, no one's confirmed yet, but I mean, we've had everybody like our staples. Uh, 
uh, player-sponsored athlete, Maddie Wedekin. Casey Sims, Casey Sims, Danbury, Ethan, Ethan Groom, Groom yeah. Kane Danbury, Jacob Peter. Uh, but we've also had really rad guests out like Rob Mack. Yeah. Mark Stahl. Mark Stahl. Seth Quintero has come yeah. out. Uh, Ruslan has been out there and uh, given rides. So we... <laughs> And George has been out there in the X Travel uh, four seater. Yeah, you, you guys have had some pretty VIP guys out there, though. Yeah. Like the, and it's cool to see like the guys that always come back out, like all the young professional kids that come back out and take. Dude, it does so much for the entire community, not just the veterans. So everyone gets, you know, Nicole from Total Chaos has been out there. Yeah, you know, so it, it, it's it's really a rad way for them to give back. And you know what we always hear, like like Rob Mack was was kind of quoted as saying that I forgot how fun off-road can be. Yeah. You know, um, so it's... When, George Earl, when you're out there and you see all that stuff, what's your favorite part about Adrenal Therapy Saturdays? Just looking at all the smiles and the happy faces on people. Yep. You know, I think that's a common thing, right? It's not a yeah. It, it's, it's a neat deal. I remember looking in the rearview mirror a couple of times when we were sending it over some of those jumps going in the corners and seeing how, like, the kids' eyes, like, I don't think you could have opened any wider. Like, they had it, like, popping out of their skull. They were so happy, like, wondering what's going on. As you're airborne and then yeah. it settles down and the vehicle settles down, yeah. <laughs> it's so cool to see that, though. Uh, but it is meaningful, right? And uh, it's an all-day event. So if you have any any questions, um, definitely. T- I didn't see people camping out there. Yeah, we're not doing the camp thing anymore, unfortunately. Uh, uh, not not anything that we did. It's just the owner of the track has requested that we don't do it anymore. So, uh, unfortunately, no more camping out. But No soup for you. You know, stay. You go yeah, home. Yeah, you go home now. <laughs> um, so, but it's a good time. It's the last one of the year. Uh, so, we really encourage everybody to come out. And then of course, it's probably going to be perfect weather too. It will be. It, it, it normally is out there. So, and it's a short course track, uh, and it's it's just it's just a lot of fun. It's actually a super fun track too. Like oh, oh and if you have your own off road machine, we don't care what it is. It could be a bone stock Jeep Wrangler like the the Ford Navy Corman who came out to support our event and then we're just like hey or like one of nick's trucks can, can we take can we take this out on the course and we're like yeah they're getting three inches of air off of you know every jump and you can hear all three all four of them in that in that jeep just whooping it up the whole time yeah uh it could be a jeep it could be uh any make a utv uh dirt bike quad I mean, atc wasn't it nick he had a toyota tacoma and he was working on a thing the whole time nick kimball yeah Nick Dude, Kimmel, yeah. He was sending that thing so hard. I, I don't know how that thing held up, man. Well, it's right about Nick Kimball. He's a, he's a combat wounded triple amputee, and uh, he's uh, uh, he's wild. He goes out there and just he's in it. He's in it to win it. So. Dude, he's an animal. Uh, we got somebody commenting in from Australia too. What's up, David? How are you? Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, George. I appreciate you, you know hanging out with us this whole time. Obviously, you put on your hat for the second half, dude. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> Well, my forehead shines, you know, and I didn't want to mess with hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, well, uh, we'll let you go. I don't know if you know how to log off or not, but you press on the screen once, and then there will be an X at the top right-hand corner. So uh, thanks very much for joining us. We can't wait to see you at the next either Adrenaline Therapy or uh, the next time we see you at the race. <laughs> Bye, George. Hey, it says leave. Okay, I'm out of here. See you, guys. Bye. Take leave. Care. Leave. <laughs> leave. You leave now. <laughs> Uh, man, uh, man, a few words. Trophy, tr- trophy bro, uh, checked in on YouTube. Oh, did said, he? uh, Warfighter Made is doing Lord's work. And yeah, we appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much. There you go. Yeah, thanks, Trophy Bro, for uh, commenting in too. Um, all right, so adrenaline therapy on October when 22nd, 22. 22 is a good number to have the adrenaline therapy. Two, two. Um, all right, what, what else is going on? You got uh, actually, you know what, just thanks some of your sponsors, and I'm gonna thank some of our sponsors. We'll get the heck out of here. Well, uh, for Beefy, uh, you know, for those that don't know, Beefy is actually named after Marine Combat Vet, uh, who was an integral part of Warfighter Made. And unfortunately, we lost him uh, in 2020, uh, not due to COVID and definitely not due to suicide. Um, It was medical malpractice. So uh, Angus Powers, his call sign was Beefy, so we named uh, our Humvee after him. And 
you know, we just want to thank BF Goodrich Tires, who's the main sponsor of Warfighter Made, um, Lucas Oil, uh, Rugged Radios, Baja Designs, PRP Seats. Um, who else we got on it? Chat Care or Wire Care Odyssey Wire Care, Battery. Odyssey Battery, mm -hmm. Chad Hull uh, donated his suspension to us for that, and it made a huge difference. Those are all BP sponsors? All BP sponsors, yeah. Dude, you guys got sponsors everywhere. I want to show off your shirt, too, because you got the, the Bolt program. Mm -hmm. uh, that's some of the things that we talked about today. Uh, yeah, for Bolt with Trail Trust and Wire Care, really came through monetarily with us for that. And, and uh, yeah. Read your sleeve, Rob. Yep. Uh, read your sleeve, Rob. Oh, the sleeve. Wait, who's saying that? Oh, I know John's saying that, right? Yeah. He's saying that because look at that right there, baby. Uh huh. <laughs> there you go, John. Uh, but yeah, and you guys also have a lot of fantastic sponsors that are just part of the whole program with the you know like well, method and everybody. Too. We got a lot of sponsors that really enjoy uh, what what our American servicemen and women have done for them and and what they are able to continue to do and and we're fortunate that they believe in warfighter made and how we do it and whatnot so 100 yeah. percent, man he's saying that australia it's midday and it's raining over there already dang well enjoy the rain dude we need some of that in california uh you guys are doing such a great job man like i really appreciate everything that you guys do because every time i have a conversation with you guys even though george Earl was sh very short uh, uh worded i learned a lot and it's cool to be able to understand that. And it's obviously, you know, like people are driving like Andrew all the way across the country, 48 hours in a truck for, let's just say, six to seven days worth of, uh, well, three days worth of fun, <laughs> four days in a truck. <laughs> it's pretty gnarly, right? So it means that they're having a lot of meaningful uh, experiences with you guys. So it's cool to see that. Yeah, it is. Uh, all right, I'm gonna thank uh, some of our sponsors too. So thank you to the guys over at KMC Wheels for being a sponsor. Really appreciate them. Thanks to the guys over at Motul. Thanks to the guys at Shock Therapy, JL Audio, um, Zoldra Racing Products. They got some cool new apparel. Uh, you can go get some of that stuff. Uh, thanks to the guys at Vision Canopy and thanks to the guys at Cryo Heat. Um, we're not gonna have a show next week because we're gonna be doing some secret stuff in Arizona, but we will see you guys at uh, the California 300, which is the next race that's coming up. And then following that, we got the Laughlin race for Best in the Desert. So lots of stuff going on in October. It's going to be pretty fun. If you guys aren't at the races, go definitely go out to Adrenaline Therapy Saturdays and hang out and uh, uh, just contact warfightermade.org. Yep. Yep. What? <laughs> Dude, you got a bunch of cool stuff no, on I'm there. Just, I'm just mm -hmm. what? Just flexing. I'm just, flexing. I'm just, I'm just showing, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, good man. I just saved your life. You did. Again. <laughs> That's what you. That's thanks, Trophy Burrow, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Yeah. You guys rock. All right. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, you. Thank you, Halima. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening to the Dirt Life Show. See you next week.